Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to the Tall Woodworker. In this video, I'm going to be turning some unique gift ideas out of resin and wood. Stick around, I'll show you what I make. So a little bit of a backstory of how I got to where I, where I am today on this project. So earlier this year, I had turned a maple and resin bowl and it turned out really cool. I decided not to record any video of it, just wanted to enjoy the experience. And uh, there were some failures with it, but uh, I have a picture of that right up here. Now, you'll notice that it has those jagged edges in the wood. That's because I cut out a whole bunch of pieces from the blank before I cast it in the resin. I mean, how else would it have gotten there? Now, instead of just throwing away all those pieces that I cut out, I decided to just collect them in a small little cup and figured, yeah, I'll do something with them at some point. And they were sitting there in that cup and I looked at it and I'm like, that actually looks really cool. What if I just poured some resin in there and turned it like as is? And here's the end result of that one. Now I ended up giving this to my mother and she loves it. Of course, what mother doesn't love her son's projects? Um, but she reached out to me and asked me if I could make a few more. And I said, okay, um, are you looking for these for, for the holidays? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, I better get to working. So we're gonna be making those in this video. Now, those previous bowls that I showed you, the resin was a, uh, a different type that I haven't used for a while. And I was about ready to purchase that again, but I decided to do a little bit of research and I came across a, something from uh, a reputable brand and I never heard of the product before. So I decided to reach out to Total Boat and they sent me a kit of their cast in turn resin. This is a one to one by volume resin, cures up fairly quickly. You do need a pressure pot for this one. Uh, you don't wanna just let it sit out there. And you can cast up to three inches in a 16 ounce container, which is exactly the amount that I need. So it should be perfect for this project. Now Total Boat did send me this kit for free so that I could use it in this video. But before you say, oh, well, you're gonna be biased, you know, because they provided you with something for free, I was actually planning on purchasing this anyway. In fact, when I reached out and said I was actually going to need two kits for my project, they declined the second kit. And I get it, I'm a, a new YouTuber to them, so they wanna see how things are going. But I still ended up going out and buying a second kit. So this one was purchased with my own money. So anything that I say about them is completely unbiased and will be truthful. I'm not gonna hide anything. If I have an issue, I'm gonna let you know about it. So just wanna disclose that up front. So stick around. I'm gonna get to cutting up some pieces of maple, putting them into a mold and start some casting. So let's get to it. I start by ripping down some maple boards I had in my shop. Honestly, the width is pretty arbitrary. I just wanted something around three quarters of an inch, so the strips were about even on all four sides. Next, I set up the miter gauge to cut pieces at various lengths. I occasionally change the angle of the miter gauge to get some more variety. As I cut, I rotate the board 90 degrees in either direction. You'll see me stop the blade every so often to clean up the pieces. Now, you would think these loose pieces aren't that dangerous as there's no fence to pinch on. But, Andrew Klein recently posted a video doing this same type of cut and the rear of his saw caught on a piece and sent it flying right at him. I wasn't going to let that happen to me. Now time to mix up the epoxy. Total Boat Cast and Turn is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not by weight. I'm mixing up two separate pots in this shot, so I pour in the resin first into both cups. Because the working time of this epoxy is only 12 minutes, I mix in the mica powder first into the resin to not waste any time. I make sure the powder is dissolved fully into the resin, then I grab two new cups to put the wood pieces in. Now I can pour in the hardener. 
I mix up the epoxy for a couple minutes, then I can pour it into the cup with the wood pieces. Now, the instructions do say that some woods may require a penetrating epoxy prior to casting with cast and turn. However, this is really difficult with all these small pieces, so I am skipping that step. It did cause some issues later on, but there was an easy fix to that. Into the pressure pot they go. I place some cups of water on top to keep the wood from floating up. Then I pressurize to 50 PSI and I let it sit under pressure for 24 hours. Well, and since they were kind enough to send me this, I suppose I should put this right about there. Thanks again, Total Boat. Now I'm in my shop and here you can see the results. So the first thing I needed to do was flatten out the top where all those wood pieces were sticking out. I do wish I had poured in some more epoxy to fully cover all the wood. But when you only have a 12 minute working window, you don't really have much time to add any more. I used a sanding disc on the lathe to grind down the wood until it was, well, mostly flat. But even then, it would still not fit in the jaws of my chuck. So, I had to grind down the edges a bit until it fit. I'm going to be showing off the process on four different pots in this video. Each one will be at a slightly different camera angle, but they all follow the same process. I figured that way you can see all of them being made in one video. Once I could securely clamp the blank into my four jaws, I start roughing out the bottom. I'm not too concerned about the profile on the sides, but I do want to even it out as much as possible. The idea here is to get rid of any wobble that is in the pot as I'm turning. Now I can turn my attention to the bottom of the blank. I'm using a pair of dividers here to mark out the location of the mortise for the bottom. Then I start cutting it out. This will actually be the last time that I can do anything to the bottom of the pot, so I focus all my attention on this right now. Now I'm refining the profile of the blank where the bottom meets the sides to give it a rounded profile. Now, remember when I said that Total Boat recommends using a stabilizing epoxy first? Well, this is where I need to pay up. There were some small air pockets that even the pressure pot couldn't eliminate, so I had to use some CA glue and activator to fill in any pits that showed up. A quick turn later, and you don't even know they're there. I have to finish the bottom before I can turn it around. Remember, this will be the last time I can do anything to the bottom while keeping it secure in the jaws. I use a sanding drill bit to sand from 120 up to 400. Then I use a friction polish to make the area nice and smooth. Now I can flip the blank around and clamp it using the mortise I just cut out. I'm going to shape out the top and the sides. Now, I have no real design planned out. I just want to make sure there aren't any straight lines, but also no odd curves. Each one of the pots that you'll see has a different shape and even a different size to it. I do have to make some more CA glue touch-ups, but before long, the outside is shaped out. I repeat the sanding process as I did before on the bottom. 
but because this side will actually be visible most of the time, I have to add a couple extra steps. What I'm doing here is using micro mesh pads with a wet sanding technique to smooth these out even further than the sandpaper does. Now you will see these strange white streaks on the blank as I stop it every now and then, but that's just the water built up on the blank itself that will easily wipe away. Once I'm finished with the micro mesh, it's on to more friction polish. So now that this is looking all nice and glossy and pristine, it's time to do the dreaded part. And literally, I mean part. I have to part the lid off. I say this is dreaded because after all that work, I have to cut into it. I start by making a small indent that will stay with the lid to create the dust seal. Then I can clear away most of the material with the parting tool to begin separating the lid. After I get most of the way through, I grab a pull saw to finish removing the lid. I'll set that aside for now and come back to it later. Time to work on the inside. I start by trying to figure out how wide I need to make the opening using the indent I made in the lid as a template. I don't want to make a pressure fit, but I don't want it to be loose either. I remove the material away slowly and check several times to get the proper fit for the lid. Now I start hollowing out the inside. I'm trying to make the sides curve into the bottom for a smooth transition. I had set a combination square to the depth I wanted to make the inside so I don't blow through the bottom. I almost did that before. This isn't an exact measure, so I just get as close as I can. I also shine a light through the headstock so I can see if I'm getting too thin at the bottom. We've been here before, so I'll make this quick. It's time to finish the inside of the pot with some sanding, some wet sanding, and then for the friction polish. Let's move on. The final bit is the underside of the lid. I mount the lid in the jaws using paper towel to protect the finish. Then I hollow out the lid for some more clearance. I'm going to skip the sanding and polishing in this one. You've seen that way too much. Once I'm all done, well, these pots are finished. Let's take a look at the final product. So what did you think? Those were the bowls that I turned for my mother and she gave those away for Christmas gifts last year. I say last year because it is now, well, March of 2022 and I made those for her back in December of 2021. So from what I heard, everybody that she gave them to really liked them and I'm really happy to hear that. So I will be posting some photos of all these on social media. Once again, thank you Total Boat for providing me with one of those kits that I used for this project. Really appreciate it. And if you're interested in their cast and turn resin, be sure to hit the link down in the description. That'll take you right to their product page. I also want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon subscribers. If you haven't done so yet and you are interested, and again, I'm not going to force anybody to do so, please check out my Patreon page and you can help support my channel. It might buy me a couple of boards. It might help me buy a tool, but as I've said in the past, my Patreon contributions are gonna be used only for this channel, nothing else. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. That's fine, I like to hear your feedback either way. Be sure to leave a comment down below with what you think about them. And until next time, thanks for joining me in my shop.